everybody. Good morning. Happy Sunday. God bless you. So good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. Now I need to know, is anybody feeling like I am? Are you glad to be here this morning? Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. What I love about the Lord and his spirit is that as long as his spirit is here, the room is full. Amen. Where two or three are gathered, the Lord can be there and he just wants our praise. So can we give him some praise this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. Happy Valentine's Day. And I'm just feeling all the love in the air. And I pray that you are feeling the same. So we welcome you. We thank you for being with us. And we thank you for joining us. Those of you who are watching online, we want you to know that we are glad you are here. Amen. As we begin to prepare our hearts for worship, I hope you've already been doing that. But if not, let's continue to do that because the presence of the Lord is here this morning. Amen. His presence is here. and Wherever his presence is, you know what? Nothing else matters to me. Amen. So let's pray. Hallelujah. God, we love you, Lord. God, we give you all the praise this morning, Lord. God, I am just happy, Lord, to be able to call on your name, Father God, and give you the glory, God, and exalt your name, Father God, Lord. You are the one that I am in love with this morning, Father God, Lord. So, Lord, we want you to just experience our love in a fresh way today, God. We want you to know, God, Lord, that we lift you up, God. We exalt you, Lord. We magnify you because we love you. And we love you because you first loved us, God. We don't even deserve it, God. So it is with that, that spirit, God, that we worship you this morning, God. We exalt you. We extol you this morning, God. So, Lord, have your way in the service today, God. Lord, I pray for everyone that is in the building this morning, God. Lord, whatever God might be hindering, God, we, we just bind it, God. We ask that your healing spirit, God, just come in, Lord. Remove all pains, God. Remove all fear, Father God. Remove all insecurities, God. Lord, this is your house, God. And your house is a hospital for those that need it, Father God. So, Lord, we worship you in that spirit today, God. Lord, have your way. In the mighty name of Jesus, our Redeemer, we pray. Let every heart that loves him say amen, amen, and amen. Praise the Lord. Every praise belongs to God. How many believe that? Can you give him praise this morning? Amen. Every praise. I know you know this song, so I want you just to, to lift it up with us this morning. I believe in corporate worship, so don't wait for us to sing to you. I want you to join in. Come on, put your hands together. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Come on, everybody sing. Every praise. Every praise.
give him praise. Give him a real praise this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. Oh, he's been so good. And you know, when we get to the point of just having that automatic praise, y'all know what the automatic praise is? You know, there's some things, a lot of things in our house are automatic. It doesn't matter what's going on. It's going to happen whether you know it or not. That AC, it's going to happen, right? If it's too hot, it's going to cool. If it's too cold, it's going to warm you. And guess what? When that automation does not work, do we know it? Yeah, we can tell it. Well, guess what? We got to have an automatic praise. Oh, I'm going to have to preach on that later. I'm going to write that one down. I need some folks with an automatic praise. I don't care what time it is. I don't care how much voice I got left or don't have. He's worthy to be praised because I love him that much. Come on, let's sing some love songs. It's Valentine's tomorrow. Can we sing some love songs? There's a love medley that we're going to sing. God has a certain kind of love, and we're going to talk about that love, but I love his love. And to us, it seems reckless. It's not. But he's gone through so much for you. Did you hear me? God has gone through so much for you that it's almost incomprehensible. I, I really don't understand it sometimes. Do I have a witness? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Because I know if it were me, I know what I would do. But God has an overwhelming, never-ending, reckless kind of love. And then we just want to think about that and just worship Him.
Hallelujah. He loves us. Oh, how he loves us. You 
if we get to a point where we understood what our praise was all about. See, we're good at praising Him. But are we good at walking that thing out and praising through? Praising anyhow. When things don't go according to plan, can we praise Him anyhow? Can you praise Him anyhow? Can you praise Him in spite of? Can you praise Him because of? Can you praise Him anyhow? My hallelujah always belongs to you. That's the kind of church I want to be at. Where the hallelujahs will go up anyhow. My hallelujah belongs to you. I'm going to say it with you one more time. My hallelujah belongs to you. I just need you to convince me two more times. But convince me. Come on, say it. Give them a praise. Hallelujah. Good morning, good morning. It is my distinct pleasure to say welcome to exciting Central Tampa Baptist Church where everyone is someone and Jesus is Lord to the glory of God. So I know everybody we're distancing, but at least take a minute. To greet those around you, those in your seats, your own family members. Isn't it good to be in the presence of the Lord this morning? We welcome all of those who are online. It's so great uh, to see all of the smiling eyes behind the mask this morning. Those of you for online, who are online, we welcome you as well. And we welcome you. Come back and join us. The Bible tells us we're better together. That we're to greet each other with a holy hug that we're to come together so we can stir up love and good works. So we welcome you to come back uh, to service and be here with us as well. Uh, and at this time, we'll take a moment to prepare our hearts for giving. Truly giving is a form of worship as well. So let us take this time to uh, bless our offering. Dear Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come to you right now, Lord, and Lord, we just thank you, Father God, for you are truly a God, not only, Lord, that sustains, but a God that blesses, Lord, in the midst of calamity, in the midst of chaos, in the midst of a pandemic. You still, Lord, provided, and in many cases, Lord, even given an overflow to your people, Father God. So it is at this time, Father God, we turn back to you and being obedient to your word, Father God, for you don't need our dimes, our dollars, or our coins. You own the cattle on a thousand hills, Father God. But this is about faith, this is about obedience, and this is about worship. So, Lord, bless these tidings and the hearts that bring them before you. May it be used to glorify your kingdom, and most of all, the name above every name, Jesus the Christ. And it is in his name we pray. Amen. Remember, God loves cheerful givers, and you can give by four methods. One, Go to centraltampa.org and click the Give Online link. Two, by texting Exciting Central with no spaces to 73256. Three, by opening the ECTBC app and clicking the Give link at the bottom. Four, by mailing any contributions to our physical address at 2923 North Tampa Street, Tampa, Florida, 33602. Remember, honor the Lord by giving Him the first part of your income, and He will fill your barns with wheat and barley and overflow your wine vats with the finest wines. Proverbs 3, 9 and 10. Thank you, and God bless.
Welcome to Exciting Central News Network. Face mask reminder. As a reminder, face masks should be worn within the sanctuary and the fellowship hall at all times. Central Prayer Line. Did you know that Central has a prayer line? You can share your prayer requests and lift up others' petitions to our great God. Monday through Friday from 6.15 a.m. to 7.45 a.m. And on Sundays from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Just call the number on the screen and enter access code to connect with us. Celebrate Recovery. Ladies, as we prepare for the Celebrate Recovery Step Study, we will start the intentional work of getting past our hurts, habits, and hang-ups. Meetings take place in the choir room located in the sanctuary on Fridays at 6.30 p.m. For more information, as well as helpful resources for men who are ready to start the journey, please visit centraltampa.org. Excite! Parents Breakfast. Let's get excited! Parents of middle and high school students, you are personally invited to come meet your student's small group leader on Saturday, February 19th from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. To save your slot, RSVP on Realm by February 16th. Men's Baseball Fellowship. Hey fellas, this one's for you. Let's hang out for an afternoon of spring training baseball on Sunday, February 27th to see the Minnesota Twins versus the Philadelphia Phillies. Come out and cheer on your favorite team to save your slot, RSVP and Realm. Central Choir Black History Expo. God has blessed your Central Choir to be featured again at the annual Black History Expo. Located at West Shore Plaza, this free event is on Saturday, February 26th and starts at 12 p.m. There'll be dance, music, spoken word, and so much more. Make sure that you don't miss exciting Central Tampa Baptist Choir performing at 4.30 p.m. For more information on today's announcement, check us out on Realm or contact the church office. And those are today's announcements. Remember, you can replay this announcement at any time via our Central app. You can download the app from our website or search for Exciting Central Tampa Baptist in the App Store or Play Store. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. So, um, if you got your tickets for the raffle, I'm about to make the drawing. Uh, everybody turned in their studs? Good. Oh, everybody know what the prizes are? So, this, is, this, this uh, raffle was to raise money for the food pantry. And this raffle was to raise money for the food pantry. Oh, okay. <laughs> so this money was raised to, this money was, this raffle was done to raise money for the food pantry. Um, we did, I think we did very well as far as ticket sales. So I'm going to go ahead and um, pull a ticket. trying to find that right one that I notched earlier. <laughs> this is the ticket. Jordan Richards. Jordan. Jordan Richards. First prize. Amen. Praise the Lord. Jordan Richards. Oh, that was the first prize for a one hour couples massage and pedic pedicure. So I guess Malika won too. <laughs> Second prize is a Valentine's gift basket, basket um, and that would be Jason Colbert. Oh, right. <laughs> I'm trying to mix them up. Third prize is 
a $25 gift card, and that would be Yvonne McGriff. I know this last prize is, is, this is a hefty one, so I gotta really get the right card here. Fourth prize is a pair of essential uh, masks, and it is Lynn DeShields. Yay. That was it. Thank you very much. I really appreciate the help on the food, food uh, pantry. Hey, and let's give Miss Phyllis a, a hand of applause. What a blessing. Congratulations to all of our winners. This was our, our, our first raffle. And again, you know, God, God has blessed us to have a really uh, effective food pantry. Uh, this is not something we are, our organization was created to do. And so uh, Phyllis took a passion uh, that she's had for years, as, as long as I have known and, and known her. And it's come to, to this point of fruition. And we just praise God for that. Because again, church, it's about being the hands and feet of Jesus. We are feeding people. We're feeding them physically. But we want to get to their souls and their spirits. So, so thank God for her and her team. And, and again, congratulations to all of our winners. And please continue to support uh, the food pantry. Continue to support all of our ministries uh, in any way possible. Not just your dollars, but we need uh, your time. And service as well. Amen. All right, we're going to bring one more song to you and then we'll prepare our hearts for the word.
or felt it we are one short this morning but I do want to send love out to our drummer he, he is under the weather this morning but but uh, <laughs> I'm gonna share he's uh you can tell he's a church boy I'm gonna share this I hope he don't kill me but he said he said how I feel you know we just don't feel right when we're not in church it's, it's, it's like we, we don't feel safe <laughs> so, so man I love that spirit I, I love that uh, I love that about him and uh, so let's lift and keep him and his family lifted in prayer uh, he'll be back soon. We, we trust and believe God. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Praise the Lord. We have uh, our visitors with us this morning. We have a Darren Bell. I hope I'm reading that right. Darren Bell. Are you here? Amen. Welcome, my brother. Welcome. Welcome. Amen. We are so glad you are here. Thank you for joining us, for joining us. And, um, we, we never take for granted. People can go anywhere. You know, there's a church on every block. So, but the fact that you, you decided to stop in, we really appreciate that. And we just want to let you know that I don't, I can't speak for other churches, but I know at this church, you're not just welcome, but you are wanted. Okay, you are always wanted here and welcomed here. And the same for our folks that are online. If we have any visitors, uh, first time uh, visitors online, please put something in the chat. Let us know. Let us know so we can greet you in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. 
All hearts and minds are clear. Did you enjoy worship? Praise the Lord. All right. Well, I am excited because we are going to, uh, we're getting into the word. Amen. Before we uh, get started, join me as, uh, as we go before the throne in prayer. Most gracious Father, Lord, I love you, God. Just thank you, God, for this beautiful day, Lord. Thank you that we can be among brothers and sisters, Lord. Uh, in, in Christ, Father God. And Lord, now as we come, Lord, to your word, Father God, I pray, Lord, that, Lord, you will just uh, uh, illuminate our minds, Father God. Lord, I open your word to us, Father God, Lord, that we will just be challenged, God. Lord, that uh, we will be renewed, energized, Father God. But most of all, Lord, we will be equipped, Lord, to, Lord, not just know your word, God, not just read about it, God, but to live out your word, Lord, in a dying world. We love you. We honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. Ooh, thank you, tech team. All right. Uh, do me a favor. Let's stand one last time and, and get your sword in your hand. And let's do our proclamation this morning. Praise the Lord. All right. And let's say this together. My spirit is God breathed. God's word is God breathed. Therefore, God's word gives me life. I am ready to hear it. I am ready to heed it. I am ready to be transformed. Praise the Lord. I heard my little baby's voice louder than everybody. Amen. Thank you. All right. It is my honor and privilege to come before you again this morning, and um, I, won't, uh, I, I won't be before you too long, but you know what? Since I said that, I'm going to just uh, be honest now, and, and I want you all to hold me to it. I'm going to stop telling people that, that I won't be before you too long, because I notice the more I preach, that becomes less true. So, <laughs> so I'm going to stop saying that altogether. But... Uh, but don't worry, don't worry. Now, brothers, I'm going to give you just a little disclaimer. If you have not already taken care of tomorrow, um, make sure you do that today. Um, the Super Bowl will be streamed. So, um, you know, it's going to be a lot of love. It won't be too much on that football field today. But, uh, but it will be streamed. So if I go a little bit long today, don't worry. We got you covered. Amen. Oh, what? <laughs> Boy. <laughs> Thank you, Pat, because, man, they felt a little violence. <laughs> right? <laughs> right. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I, um, the, the sermon this morning, I hope, um, it, if you don't know me by now, I really have a heart for the Christian life. And my, my hope and prayer, and I know God has just put this passion on my heart, is that we live authentic Christian lives. I mean, the life that, that um, that's real, real. And I just, I don't serve a fake God. I don't serve one that's dead or, or imagination. I serve a living God who's real. And so I want my life to, to reflect that as well. Is anybody understand that? Witness, is you with me? So, so that's the spirit that I, I always want to try to share, share God's word in. So, um, so we'll be coming from two texts today. Uh, the book of John, chapter 21, uh, verses 15 to 19, and also Matthew 28, uh, verses 19 and 20. And again, just keeping in the flow of love and knowing that Valentine's is a beautiful day. It's a little stressful for some of us, but... But it is, it is a nice day. It's, it's a beautiful day. And regardless of, of where it came from and, and, you know, who it's named after, we, I don't really care about that. One thing we can all agree on is that Valentine's Day is a day of love, right? Okay? It's not even, it's a, a ubiquitous worldwide theme. I mean, you don't have to be Christian. You don't have to be anything. You just know that February 14th is about love. So even the most devout of us, you know, we can't get around that. But what I want to challenge us is to really think about this day of love uh, from the perspective of our, of our own spiritual growth for that. After all, what's one of the primary attributes of the God we serve? 
love. God is love. Amen? Amen. He is love. So, I mean, it makes perfect sense that if I'm talking about a day of love, that my first thought was, is always God. And I want to challenge you, if that's not the case, I hope by the end of this message that will be, be the case. But absolutely, um, I, I cannot get around, get around God of love. And I don't want you to miss the point of, of what I'm going to tell you this sermon. So I, I don't want to get caught up into the romanticism and the mushy-gushy. It is all of that. But, but there's something else to this love relationship that I want you to think about. All right, so I want you to think about what it means to be a Christian, okay? Now, this message is geared towards believers, but this is for everybody because we have some folks that might be hearing me, might be in this room or online who maybe haven't given their lives yet. And so I just want to help you along as, as the Spirit is working in your heart. But we're in a love relationship to be a Christian. Being Christian means that we are called to pursue the will of God. Amen? Now, I need you to talk back to me so I know that you're tracking with me. And first and foremost, you are not asleep. Okay? You are not allowed to sleep. You can't catnap or anything. None of that. Okay? And, and don't try to close your eyes like you're praying and meditating. That, I, I grew up in church all my life. I know what all that looked like. God's will is that you and I follow the pattern that Jesus left. That's what it means to be Christian, Christ-like. Christ Amen? Um, while we're on this Christian journey. So the question is, have you matured in your Christian journey enough for God to see your love in action? Let me, let me ask that again because I want you to think about this. Have you matured in your Christian journey enough for God to see your love in action? All right, so as we prepare again for this day, and we're going to be expressing our love for very special people, our spouses, our significant others, our friends, brothers, sisters, cousins, aunts, grandmamas, nieces, nephew. Again, I want to challenge you to look at this from God's perspective. There's almost, um, there's a comparison that I want you to think about, okay? Form over function. Everybody say form over function. All right. What I mean by that is, as beautiful as February 14th is, Valentine's Day, what really matters is what happens after February 14th. Anybody tracking with me? I don't think I got everybody yet. As beautiful as that day is, as beautiful as those flowers are and that chocolate and all of that stuff, those cards and those candy grams, what's really more important is what happens after that. There's a form of a function that I, I want us to, to think about. Without, form is beautiful, okay? Don't get me wrong. Don't hear me saying things need to be beautiful because the more beautiful they are, the better they're received, right? Right? But what is that form's usefulness if it has no function, no substance? It's, not, it's worthless, right? I want you to think about that. And, and, and particularly, um, particularly those who might be seeking, single, I don't know if you're looking or not. Sometimes people be like, I ain't looking. I'm single and satisfied. That's great. Let me, let me pass along something that I would want my daughter, my kids to know, our young adults, our teenagers to know. I want you to not get caught up in form, but make sure you are looking at function. Don't get caught up in form. Make sure you are looking at substance. Because one thing I have come to know, someone can look good all day long, but if they are incapable of loving, it's not going to work. Amen? They can look good all day long, but if something's wrong with their personality, it ain't going to work. They can look good, the form can be there, but if they don't have a moral code, a moral compass, you're headed for a disaster. So again, don't hear me, don't hear me, form, form is important. We want things to look nice, but what's more important is the substance, is its function. If you fall in love with somebody, make sure that they are in love with God first. 
Can I say that again? I, listen to me. I'm telling you, make sure that they are in love with God first. Now, I'm gonna take, hold on to that because I'm going to take that somewhere, but it might make you uncomfortable in a minute. In other words, saying the words, I love you is nice, but performing the love is where the rubber meets the road. So if I had to title this sermon, I would title this, this sermon, If You Love Me. Okay, everybody say, If You Love Me. All right. Now, this If You Love Me isn't coming from you. This is coming from God. That changes things, doesn't it? See, it's one thing when I tell you, you know, you know, do you love me? Or if I ask that question, it's one thing if my brother and sister, you know, ask you that question. What is it when God asks you, do you love me? If you love me, then, you know. I was, uh, there, there's an R&B song that I love, man. And uh, I had this ability to take R&B songs and, and make them church songs. That's how I knew God just wasn't going to let go. Uh, but it's by Brownstone, and it's called If You Love Me. And, uh, man, that chorus speaks to it. Man, I was like this close from playing. I'm like, I can't play that in church. But, <laughs> but, uh, that's me. but again, so, so that's where the rubber meets the road. If you love God, then you know, then you know that love is useless in form without its function, okay? And the, the thing why that's so important is because if you have people who are filled with, with a love, a form of love, but it's not really a real love, then guess what? We get churches that are like that. We get churches who appear to be loving, churches who appear to walk in love, but they're not in function. And they become what? Useless. And one of the scriptures I'm going to share with you, you're going to find out what happens to things that are useless. As we think about our Christian, Christian, Christian walk, and I'm going to keep saying walk because I don't even want you to think about church. I don't want you to think about ministry right now. I want you to think about you. I want you to think about your, yourself. As we think about our Christian walk, my prayer for the church is that we become filled with individuals who seek to walk closer with God every week. The very term Christian journey or walk means what? We are going somewhere, right? I want to challenge you. That, that means that prayerfully we're moving towards something, towards God, closer. That's why I'm always singing these songs, Draw Me Closer. As the deer panted, God, I, I'm trying to get to you. And I think it's a very serious misconception when we get stagnant and we start to get comfortable there. And what really is a problem is when we're there, we start blaming everything else. Amen? We got to be moving forward. And the thing is, we're always moving, whether you know it or not. How many know that you're always moving? Even when you feel like you're in a dry place, you might be in a dry place, but guess what? You're still moving. The question is, which way are you moving? Are you moving towards him or are you moving back? But I promise you, you're still moving. The, the closest analogy I can think of is I, I love the beach. And my earliest memory of being on Daytona Beach is, um, you know, every, how many go to the beach? We got beach folks out here? Yeah. What happens when you go out into the water? You set your chair up, you set your, your beach towel up, and you go out into the water, especially if you got kids. You're looking at that chair. That's your marker, right? Well, when you go out there, if you're not paying attention, what happens? You start drifting out, don't you? You start getting further and further away. That chair and that towel keep moving. You don't even realize how that happens. That's what happens in our spiritual journeys. If you don't have that spot, if you don't keep your eyes on that spot, you will drift. As Christian brothers and sisters, guys, we have got to keep our eyes on the spot. You will drift. Amen? So what happens when you're at the beach, what you do is, as you're playing, as you're splashing and drowning people, you always have that chair in the corner of your eye. You always got that beach towel in the corner of your eye, don't you? Because you know what's going to happen, and you adjust to make sure that you don't go too far. So, as believers, are we keeping our eyes on Christ? Have we learned to adjust when we feel ourselves drifting? 
Most of us can do that. I guess the better question is how fast do we do it? So let's look at the book of John, chapter 21. I love this passage. I know you're going to recognize it. And, uh, but this, this passage beautifully, beautifully illustrates all of what I, I want us to understand about this day of love. This day of love. It, it, it highlights uh, Jesus and, and my boy Peter. I love Peter. Anybody love Peter like I do? I love Peter because I can relate to Peter. <laughs> Peter he talked a lot. And, uh, and got his foot in his mouth. We used to hear that from another preacher. See, Peter had peppermint socks because he kept his foot in his mouth. In this, in this story, in this passage here, Jesus has been crucified. He has, he has been resurrected. And he, is, he has died and, and, and uh, been buried. And he's, raised, he's been raised from the grave. And he's been making appearances to the disciples. This is his third appearance. And on this particular time... He's met the disciples out, and they're fishing. They've gone back to do what they do, and they're fishing, having problems catching fish. Jesus is like, hey, put your net on the other side there. And they're pulling up fish, pulling up fish. And so Jesus invites them back to the shore for breakfast to eat. And so this is where this, this picks up. And let, let's read this together. John chapter 21, verses 15 says, when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus asked Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said to them. You know that I love you. Feed my lambs, he told them. A second time he asked them, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, he said to him. You know that I love you. Shepherd my sheep, he told them. He asked them the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved. That he asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Feed my sheep. Jesus said, truly I tell you, when you were younger, you would tie your belt and walk wherever you wanted. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will tie you and carry you where you don't want to go. He said this to indicate by what kind of death Peter would glorify God. After saying this, he told him, follow me. That is, man, I just love that. That's such a beautiful, uh, beautiful story. Now, the thing I want to I bring out in this particular passage here is that you notice Jesus asked him how many times? Three times. Now, we know we kind of understand why Jesus asked him that three times because Peter had previously denied Jesus three times. But I want you to pay attention to the word love and, and, and when you look at the, the translation of that that word. In verse 15, Jesus asked the first time, he said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Right there, Jesus is using the word that has been transcribed from agape, yo. Agape love. What kind of love is that? That's that pure love. That, that is a pure form of love. And not only is it a pure love, this is a sacrificial kind of love. Everybody say sacrificial. Okay, now there's another kind of love that we're familiar with, isn't there? There's that love that is translated from the word phileo. What does that mean? Amen. That's that brotherly love, right? Did you realize he uses both of them? The first one, Jesus uses the agape. Simon, son of John, do you agape me more? Do you love me more than these? Okay, but guess what? Peter learns. Peter doesn't respond with the same love. Okay, our Bible tells us, he says, yes, yes, Lord, you know that I love you, but that love is the phileo love. See, <laughs> Peter learned something. He stuck his foot in his mouth one time, and he got called on it. Peter was the first one, no, Jesus, I love you more than all these folks. I love you. Jesus is like, no, no, be careful because you're going to deny me three times before the rooster crows. So Peter learned from that. That rooster embarrassed him. Peter learned. This time, he was like, no, no, I ain't tripping up. So he used the phileo. He used that brotherly love. So Jesus asked him again, Simon and John, do you love me? This time, Jesus uses the phileo love. Peter was grieved. Oh, I'm sorry. 
Hold up. Back up to 16 because I skipped it. Jesus asked him a second time. Simon said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Okay. The second time, again, Jesus uses the agape love. Okay. And Peter responds again, God, you know that I love you. Peter again responded with the phileo love, not with the agape. So the third time, Jesus says, okay, all right. Simon, son of John, do you phileo love me? This time, Peter was grieved that he asked him the third time. He asked the third time and says, do you love me? He says, Lord, you know everything. You know that I phileo love you. Why do I mention that, church? Jesus was trying to get Peter to see something. If you love me, if you're going to follow me, I don't need you just to say I love you. I don't need a brotherly love. I don't need that, oh, I got you. Yeah, I love you, man. I love you. No, that ain't what I'm talking about. I need that agape love from you. I need that sacrificial love from you. I need that pure love from you. My brothers and sisters, do you have that agape love for Jesus? Don't answer that. What if instead of Peter, it was you standing on the beach that day and Jesus told you, if you love me, feed my sheep? It's all through the Bible, church. If you love me, keep my commands. Jesus was showing Peter that this is what's going to be required to follow him. Are we Christians? I want you to answer that one. Are we Christians? Okay. Do we have what it takes to follow him? Don't answer that one. I don't want you to lie. As much... As we love and we claim to love, there's something special about this love. Now, let me break this down even further. We love our families. Do we love our families? Of course we do. We love our spouses, our children. But as followers of Christ, guess what? They are not your priority. I'm going to say that again. Your family is not your priority. Your spouse is not your priority. Those precious bundles of joy, those children that we love, they're not your priority. Your greatest love relationship as a Christian is with who? It's with God the Father. Now listen, I want you to hear that real good because the problem with the church is we put a lot of things in the place where God should be. So I want to be very clear as we go into Valentine's and as you're thinking about your love relationship, I want to be very clear on what our priorities need to be to be effective. God is always to be our priority. Now, I know that might sound very harsh, so let me share some things and let me prove that to you. In Luke chapter 18, you all familiar with the story. Jesus challenged a rich young ruler. And he challenged him because after the rich young ruler asked him the question, Jesus challenged him and told him he had to sell all he had to the poor and come and follow him. Now, again, this is why Peter, my boy, because right there, this is where Peter jumps in again. And Peter's like, look, Jesus, Jesus, look, we left all we had and we following you. I'm like, yeah, Peter, come on, man, this ain't got nothing to do with you. <laughs> but there's Peter again. But guess what? Peter had a good point. Look at Luke chapter 18. Pick up at verse 29 to 30. Jesus says, so he said to them, truly I tell you, there is no one who has left a house, wife or brothers or sisters, parents or children because of the kingdom of God, who will not receive many times more at this time and eternal life in the age to come. Do you hear what he's telling you? There's not one person who has sacrificed all of these things that we hold so dear and have not been rewarded handsomely and and better than, than anything in this world. Now and will be rewarded later. Look over at Luke chapter 14. He even, he even said it again. 14 verse uh, 25 to 27. Now great crowds were traveling with him, so he turned and said to them, 26, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and even his own life, he might not be my disciple. Okay, you await. He cannot be my disciple. 
Do y'all understand that? He cannot. <laughs> Guys, it's serious. This is a serious thing. And as good as God has been with all the worship songs that we sing, and as much as we say that we love God, how dare I put anything before him when he gave me everything that, that I'm, I'm happy to have. Guys, and, and the thing is, Jesus isn't just telling us that. He demonstrated it. Did God hold anything back to get to us? <laughs> Almost reckless. Who does that? Gives up their only child for me. Listen, I know when we read these passages, they seem hard, but guys, the whole point is that there is a cost to serving Christ. The whole Bible is summed up in the words that we're going to share tomorrow. I love you. Yeah, God, but you don't know what I did. I, I know what you did. I love you. The kind of love that God offers to us and expects in return must cost something and not just look pretty. Amen? God didn't just say it. He proved it. So, no, it's not good enough for me to give him a Valentine's Day kind of love. You know that love where it's, oh, I'm driving. Oh, man, I ain't got nothing. Let me pull over to Walgreens, run in here real quick, pick up some flowers in a cart, some stale chocolates, a pack of gum. Let me grab that. Here, baby. Happy Valentine's Man. My wife see through that 10 miles away. Man. No, I ain't ashamed to admit it because I'm keeping mine. So, anyway, let me. <laughs> I won't play by that one. No. <laughs> I'm back. I'm back. Um, <laughs> listen, guys, that's not the kind of love God is looking for. He's looking for real sacrificial love. Listen, I want to give him that Peter 1 approach. Look, flip over to Peter 1. I know I got y'all bouncing all over the place, but, but just, just hang with me. Peter chapter 1, verses 18 uh, to 19 says, For you know that you were redeemed from your empty way of life, inherited from your fathers, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with what? The precious blood of Christ, like that of an unblemished and spotless lamb. Guys, we can't, we can't take something like that lightly. Amen? We got to treat his blood like what it is, that precious, that precious commodity. It's more valuable than gold. Okay? Or do I respond with that, with that, that phony love? No. I want the love I want him to have the love that has to be protected. It's something that says, I cherish it. I don't take for granted what you did. I mess up, Lord, but I'm coming back. I might have drifted a little bit, but God, I'm running back to you. I ain't walking. I ain't, oh, let me get into church today. I ain't been in a couple Sundays. No. Uh-uh. I'm like the brother said, look, I don't feel saved if I ain't in church. If I ain't in his presence, God, no. I got to feel you. And when you are in those dry places... It's on purpose. He needs to see you coming for him. He needs to see you running towards him. The beautiful part about it, he's already promised, if you run towards him, he's going to meet you halfway. How beautiful is that? Come on now, somebody ought to be happy about that. Biblical love, and here's, here's my bottom line, one of my bottom lines, I got more than one, so don't get happy. Biblical love is an action item. It's not just saying something we say or do, but it's a way of life, church. So when we serve, we serve out of love. When we give, we give out of love. Oh, man, I love the day when we come and we, we're able to serve. Not because, oh, let me get I don't feel like getting another email. They send me one more text. They send me one more email. I don't need you. I don't need you. You know why? Guess what? Because I ain't feel like being here. 
So if we can't serve, if we can't give out of a love relationship with him, why are you playing with his blood like that? Why are you playing with something that's so costly? I'm saying this for a reason. And again, I, I, I don't want you to feel all mushy. I want, you to, I want you to feel concerned about where you are. From the Old Testament to the New Testament, God's love is in action over and over again, right? Whether it was through creating, appointing, plague, everything God did was what? Through love. There was destruction. God blessed. There were sacrifices. As God appointed everything he did, first page to the last page, was out of love, which culminated, which culminated, of course, in the cross, with Jesus dying on the cross and his, his crucifixion. But guess what? That wasn't the end of it. Yes, he rose, but why did he rose? He came back. He gave us something to do. Matthew 28, 19. Anybody familiar with that scripture? Are we really familiar with that? Let me, let, me, let me flip to that and read that real quick. Because I want to make a certain connection here. And I don't want to wait until our missions committee has to get up and, and rally us. Because they do a wonderful job, but what they're really telling this church is, you know, this is something we should be doing all year. But listen, we know this one. Matthew 28, 19 says, go therefore and make. Yeah, let me do that again because I want to hear you. Go therefore and make what? Of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe everything I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Now, if we're in a love relationship and we already agree that love is an action, here's our action. Here's our marching orders. This is not for the pastor. This is not for the missions committee. Praise God. But guess what? Whether we have a committee, missions funds or not, we're still doing missions, right? Now, take your minds off the church. Are you doing this? So I'm going to give you another tip. If you're stagnant, you just, oh, man, I feel like I need to be growing spiritually. I need to be doing more. I'm going to give you a tip on how to jumpstart that. You know how to do that? Go disciple somebody. Go find somebody and disciple them. Guys, as much as it's command, it's a charge. This should be a passion. This should be a natural thing for all of us. God says, if you love me, guess what? You're intentional about cultivating this relationship. That means our desire and our passions lead up to Matthew 28. It's not something the pastor has to get up and pump us up to do. We're doing it naturally. Amen? Hey, you ain't got to agree with me. That's all right. I'm telling the truth. Man. Let me give you another way. I'm going to use my spiritual imagination. I submit to you today that the love I'm talking about is not a romantic comedy, but it's more like an action movie. So if I use my imagination, let me ask this. There, there is one of the greatest movies I think ever made. One of, I didn't say the greatest, one of the Avengers. Who did not see the Avengers Endgame? Really? You didn't see? You didn't see no? Okay. All right. <laughs> Sorry. Right. I thought all God people saw. No. <laughs> Listen, there's a, part, there's a particular scene that I love in the Endgame, and it's at this point they realize they got to bring all of mankind back. The only way to do that is going to have to be a sacrifice made because there's a stone, a soul stone that needs to be acquired. The only way to get this stone to bring all of mankind back is there has to be a sacrifice. So Black Widow is on the mountain on the planet Vormir with Hawkeye. Y'all remember this scene? And they're having a dilemma. And they each realize that 
I'm going to have to kill myself to get this stone. The beautiful thing about that whole thing is, without saying a word, they individually decided they were going to sacrifice themselves for the greater good. Now, the acting was good and all of that, but do you, you get where I'm going with this? The next action scene was them running to the edge of the cliff. They're running. She's running to it. He punches her or whatever, knocks her down, get her down, and he's running to the edge of the cliff. She shoots him, you know, to, to make him fall so he doesn't get to it, and they both end up going off the edge, and we all know at the, at the end, it's Black Widow that ends up dying and giving her life. My question to you, church, is what if, what if ministry looked like that? What if we had a church where everybody was running to sacrifice themselves for the greater good? Seriously, think about it. Man, if everybody understood what Jesus did on the cross and what he modeled for us, man, and everybody was, forget me, forget my feelings, forget my emotions. I got a job to do. Oh, man. Can you imagine the impact we would make for the world? I ain't talking about Tampa. I'm talking about the world. That's why you hear, hear your pastor always saying worldwide. That's where the vision is, church. That's what they did in the book of Acts. There was no, there was no miracle program and no, no this. It was simply people following Jesus' lead, discipling, teaching. That's where we got to be. In all seriousness, Hollywood makes this look easy, guys, but there's nothing easy about this. There was nothing easy about Jesus when he was in the garden crying, praying over us, over what he had to do. There's nothing easy and nothing funny about him sweating drops of blood because he knew he had to do the unthinkable. To the point, Lord, please, God, if it's your will, take this cup, let it pass, God. But nevertheless, your will be done. Have you prayed like that lately? Don't answer it. Church, that's where we got to be. And again, I don't even want you thinking about ministries. I don't want you thinking about an org chart. I don't want you thinking about it. I want you to think about where you are individually. Because only you can answer that. So as hard as that is, guys, guess what? On top of that, I haven't even talked about old Slewfoot Satan. On top of all of that, his main job is to distract. And unfortunately, he's good at what he does. But he does what? He comes to kill, steal, and destroy, right? He's slick. He's like, he's like a, a, a tiger just waiting to pounce. The good news is, church, even that doesn't matter because God is sovereign. So everything that Satan thinks he does, everything he's trying, God already knows. And man, how sweet is it, man, when we, we can be like Job. God can look at us like he looked at Job. Hey, hey, have you tried that one? That's my servant over there. How sweet would that be, man, if we had a whole church of folks like that? To stay on mission, guys, we got to keep moving forward in our spiritual growth. Don't be satisfied or lazy about where you are. And this is my last point I want to bring to you. There's a serious danger in this as well. And I don't, I don't want to, to leave you without pointing this out. Go to Hebrews chapter 6. I'm going to look at verses 4 through 8 for a minute. It says, for it is impossible to renew to repentance those who were once enlightened, who tasted the heavenly gift, who shared in the Holy Spirit, who tasted God's word and the powers of the coming age and who have fallen away. This is because to their own harm, they are re-crucifying the son of God and holding him up to contempt for the ground that drinks the rain that often falls on it. And that produces vegetation useful to those for whom it's cultivated receives blessing from God. But if it produces thorns and thistles, it is worthless and about to be cursed. And at the end, it will be burned. Now, this passage, it, is, it can be confusing, and I know that there are people who have taken this passage, and they've used it for, for wrong things. They, they said stuff like, oh, this is proof you can lose your salvation. No, I'm going to tell you now, you cannot. 
this is not what that passage is about. I know that's what this passage is not about because there are too many scriptures that tell us otherwise. Amen. John 637, Romans 828, Ephesians 1. John, I'm not going to read all of them, but trust me. What it does tell me is that there is a danger in not cultivating your spiritual growth. Okay? Do not get complacent. Do not get lazy. People can fall away. And what it's telling us in verse 4 is, guess what? It's impossible for us to do anything with these people. There is a level that there's nothing we can do. There's nothing we can do. God can do it. How many know there's some things that you're just going to have to leave in God's hands? Spend time with him so you can discern the difference. Because I see a lot of, and, and I fall into this too. There are some things, we, battles we be fighting, we have no business fighting. Okay, this scripture speaks to that. There are people who have tasted, and then they know. But they still choose to do the wrong thing. You know what? Some, sometimes we're going to have to lead those things to God. We can't do anything about that. And they fall away. But what this also tells me in verse 7, for the ground that drinks the rain and often falls on it and produces vegetation useful to those for whom it's cultivated receives a blessing. Guys, the stuff that you do and the service that you give, it ain't for you. Do you hear me? The songs that we sing, it ain't for us. This stage that we stand on, that we sing from and we preach from, ain't got nothing to do with you. That's probably why they, they, I never communicate well on colors. We try to coordinate because remember, form, I didn't say it wasn't important. Form is still needed. But I need substance. I need to know that they understand the words that are coming out of my mouth and that it's pleasing. Amen, praise team. Come on. <laughs> okay. So, no, we're going to worry about colors later. I need to make sure the song is right. Anything. That verse tells me, guys, that the stuff that we do, it's not for you. And when you do those things and when you, when you grow in those things, there's a blessing. But verse 8 says, if you're not productive, if you're producing thorns and thistles, you're considered worthless. Not only that, you're getting ready to be cursed. Not only that, you're going to be burned. You're out. John 6, 37, everyone the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will never cast out. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of uh, the one who sent me. This is the will of the one who sent me, that I should lose none of those he has given me, but should raise them up on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him will have eternal life and will raise him up on the last day. No, you ain't got nothing to worry about. You, once you're saved, you are saved. But guys, we got work to do. Don't sit soaking sour. I'm almost done. If you are not drawing closer to God, you're drifting. Remember I told you, you're not standing still, guys. You're always moving. As you go into Valentine's Day, and I hope you're spending time with God, and you're getting priorities right, understand you're always moving. If you're not moving towards them, you're going back. My last point is, and I talked about the Matthew 28, the greatest thing we can do is do what Jesus told us to do. Go and make disciples. Listen, if he loved us that much for the church, that's what he wants. That's his greatest gift. How you live your life for Jesus is the greatest discipleship tool we have. Did you catch that? You don't need a discipleship course. All you need is the word. All you need to do is follow Jesus. Yes, they help. We have leaders and we have teachers. I will help you. Pastors and more will help you. We can show you how to do these things, but guess what? You don't need all of that. Live your life for Jesus. I guarantee you somebody's watching you. And be available. Guess what? You got a perfect open door to a discipleship relationship right there. Just be aware. Somebody's watching you, church. Somebody's watching you. The stuff you do in the dark, 
it's going to come out. Somebody's watching you. They see that too. Yeah, they may see you praising and shouting and oh, hallelujah. And, but they see the other stuff too. Let's make sure people see us discipling and see Jesus. God loves us, man. Is somebody glad about that? Yeah, he loves us. I can't keep that. And then the closer you get to him, you can't keep that to yourself. And so you ought to want to tell somebody. So what I'm going to do right now is just let somebody know, if, you, if you're not quite sure what I'm talking about and, and, and I've sparked your interest, I want to introduce you to somebody. I want to introduce you to Jesus. Because I may not have all the answers, but I tell you, he's everything you need. He's all you need. Do I have a witness who knows that? Anybody believe that? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's stand to our feet as we open the doors of the church. And we're going to have a time of prayer, Pastor Z, if you will. And I want to just end this message and just encourage you. I hope I've challenged you. Has anybody been challenged today? Because I, I, I don't have time to entertain you. <laughs> Life too short. But man, when we all get on the same page, I'm going to ask Pastor to, to extend the invitation and offer a prayer. But I want you to be praying, not just for someone else to get this message, but I want you to be praying for your own journey this morning. Come on, were you blessed by the message today? Amen. Pastor Zeb said some really powerful things at the beginning of his sermon that could have caused some eyebrows to raise. Among them was that your family is not your priority. I, I know some eyebrows may have raised on that one. Uh, your, your job is not your priority. That's, that's some powerful words. But he backed it up. God says, unless you are willing to forsake them for me, you can't be my disciple. There is no excuse that we can have for being disciples. There's nothing else we can put in the way. We have to submit everything. Everything, everything. And that's the message. How are we functioning if we have been formed with God, if we have now been restored into his family and we are now sons of his, there's a way we should function. And so there is, there is, there is an opportunity, an opportunity for us to work on the love. And that's the key, it's the love. The entire Old Testament was based on thou shalt love the Lord in all of thy heart new is the same. What is your love like? Come on, it's Valentine's Sunday. What is your love?
were Valentine's Day for the Lord Jesus Christ, would you pass the love test? I, I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm imploring you right now. Come to the altar if the Lord leads you to and say, I want to walk in the love. I, I know my love. I know my love with the Lord is not what it's supposed to be. I just know it. It is not. I don't put him first. I don't put him foremost. He does not call all the shots in my life. I need to surrender to God. And sometimes that's the hardest thing for us to do. Please remain on the altar for a while so we can pray for you. That might be, that's the hardest thing for Christians to do. Is to surrender. But as we get ready to pray I'm asking you as you look at your life and your love life with God and as you look at your discipleship structure are you what God wants you to be if you've never accepted Jesus Christ as a savior he died on the cross for you and you've never accepted him as your savior discipleship begins right there you today accept him not just here but online just type I need prayer or just type the word prayer somebody will contact you instantly online if you would like to become a member of our church we would be so delighted to have you and to help you train you and groom you to be a disciple and so we are going to pray if the Lord moves you to come up to the altar come please and let's pray this is, this is your time to look at your Valentine's relationship with the Lord and say,
has had your priority must be on the altar, whatever it is and whoever it is that has been your priority, lest you lose it. Whoever you put on the altar before God is at stake. So, Father, they've come. I pray that you help us. First, help the love. Help us to love you with all of our hearts, all of our souls, all of our minds, all of our strengths. And then, Father, to be your disciples, to convert others to the similar commitments as we have. First, again together for the Lord all right so we so we know that we know that um, um, after Abraham tried to sacrifice his son the Lord said no and the next best thing was that there was a ram in the thicket well we know that the bucks did not make it to the Super Bowl <laughs> but there is a ram in the thicket no no, no? I'm just trying I'm trying to be biblical the best I can I mean, there's a ram. No, uh, um, I tried, brothers. I tried. I tried. <laughs> I'm getting. Re I'm getting ready to lose two deacons right now. <laughs> oh, he said, "Get out of here with that." <laughs> I hope you enjoy. I hope you enjoy the Super Bowl. Do enjoy it. I plan to enjoy it myself. Thank you so much for sharing a good day with us. A day where we just love the Lord and serve the Lord. And enjoyed the worship. Thank you, Pastor Zeb, and thank you for the worship team. And right now we are going into Amen. Put your hands together. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Amen. I don't know if you pay attention to their faces, but I have never seen I I I, I you know I'm a musician too, but I have never seen a face like that one. He is so happy with a bass. I mean, if you watch in practice, it's the same thing. He always has a big smile on his face because he just loves the Lord. Even with a mask on, you can see he's smiling. He just loves the Lord. He loves the Lord more than he loves the bass guitar. And I just thank you, thank you, thank you so much for all you do. All of them, all of them. Thank you so much. Well, let's do our benediction. Thank you to our guests for looking us up on online and being here today. I hope you did enjoy our service. And we in 
invite you to come back. Thank you so much.